Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Arma 3 video. We've drawn down the first third of the calendar year and have seen some absolute unit mods hit the workshop. As always, if you love Arma 3 content and want to continue to see more, drop a thousand pounder on that like and subscribe button so you're always caught up. I create mod lists, Arma 3 analysis and lore videos, and much more, all neatly packed into playlists on my channel for easy navigation. If you have a mod you would love to see featured in a video because it slaps, drop it in a comment below and I'll take a look. With that, let's get right into 15 of the best mods as of April 2023. At number 15 is Kamikaze Drone by Dancan37. We've entered a whole new realm of drone warfare with this one. Kamikaze Drone is exactly how it sounds. A darter UAV has been outfitted with an RPG and can either be command detonated by the operator or will detonate on contact with the vehicle or other object. This type of combat has gotten a lot of media attention during the recent Russian invasion of Ukraine as both sides have been seen utilizing such tactics and it was only a matter of time before we saw some mods imitating these actions. Warfare has evolved and has become more and more intricate and impersonal, which leads to improvised tactics like this. They're effective though and means one side keeps their troops safe and able to fight other battles even if the drone is lost. We're going to see a lot more of this type of innovation in future wars, I'm sure. At number 14, we've got Reload Repack Turret Magazines by Ampersand. This man has taken to the workshop by storm, having recently put out a ton of new mechanics mods that positively slap. One of these mods is Reload Repack, which allows you to reload mid-magazine when using a turret, and instead of losing any unused ammo from that belt, it's recalculated back into the remaining turret ammo supply of your last magazine. So now, if you start with 500 rounds, you get to fire all 500, no matter when you decide to reload. Right now, this mod is only meant to work with vehicle-mounted coaxial machine guns and static turrets. This is an absolute must-have mod, and one that is never leaving my personal mod list. At number 13 is Arsenal Extension by Polpox, another incredible creator who decided to save everyone a ton of time in the arsenal we all know and love. This mod allows for a streamlined approach to categorizing like items within the arsenal. Instead of having 30 variants all in a row in a huge list on the left, now you can right click on a weapon and a variant's user interface will open allowing you to pick the camo scheme or attachment variant you desire. A small number under the weapon in the main list denotes how many variants are available for that weapon which is a nice touch. This also includes Polpox's arsenal search feature where you can hit Control F and search by name in either the left or the right asset listing, saving you a shitload of time. I mean, at least it saves me a shitload of time. At number 12, we've got Tank Rex by Existence is Punishment. What a name, dude. This is a truly simple mod, but one that brings a ton of ambience to your battlefield. A war zone will be riddled with destroyed vehicle husks, and these compositions are handmade to give you that immersive feel. As said, this is a composition, so when you download it, make sure you're looking in the Steam Workshop compositions to find it. Using the editor or Zeus, you can add some smoke pillars to give it a little more razzle-dazzle, but don't add too many so you keep your frame rates down. At number 11 is Snapping for Eden and Zeus by Ampersand. This one is a mind blower, dude. It amazes me what creators find to constantly improve Armour 3's quality of life. This is one of those that became an instant success due to how innovative it is. This mod allows you to instantly snap objects that are of like size to one another along a 90 degree axis. This means creating custom buildings and compositions has never been easier. No longer do you have to finesse the objects to get them perfect, it lines up for you. The mod also marks the connection points in red if it's too far and yellow and green if you're close enough. This mod works in both the Eden Editor and Zeus, so if you're wanting mods that help you build a better environment, then this is the mod for you. At number 10, we've got Oscam Kuma MBT52 by I Never Asked for Blueberries. Again with the name, dude. 10 years later and I'm still blown away by the new and sexy camo schemes coming out for Arma 3's base game assets. Oscam looks gorgeous on the MBT-52 and works pretty well on the vanilla environment, but I believe it was meant for the Australian map. Any new camo schemes for the base game assets are a welcome addition in my book. 
Yeah, number nine is Lightweight Factions by Sleeper. More mods enhancing the vanilla experience, Lightweight Factions is a huge collection of both new and familiar factions using the base game assets. This is an amazing thing in my opinion because honestly I, I want more factions to go up against and this allows for a massive amount of renewed possibilities for mission makers without having to rely on a ton of new dependencies. It's fun killing CSAT, FIA, and AAF but sometimes you just you want something else to take on. Enter Lightweight Factions, where you've now got over 20 new factions to either play as or hunt down. Some factions are new, like the French Foreign Legion and Israeli Defense Forces, and some are remakes of older factions we're familiar with in Arma, like the Horizon Defense Forces and Altus Armed Forces. This is an amazing collection that you should absolutely run with at all times. At number 8, we've got Photon VFX by Winza. This mod enhances the brightness and visual fidelity of explosions and firefights by including brighter, more vibrant flashes for explosions and increasing the tracer lifetime at relevant ranges. A blast refract effect has also been added, which really looks awesome. You should be wary though, that using this mod with other visual effects mods that also add a blast refract can cause a double effect and run down your FPS a little bit. This mod was designed with minimal FPS impact in mind, as such it is much simpler than FX mods like Blast Core. I would say this is the first good step for an increased explosion visual effects mod if you're not really ready to try out Blast Core yet. At number 7 is AAF Remake by Nook Shisho 5G. Another awesome rework of assets to enhance the vanilla playstyle. This version of the AAF remained fiercely loyal to Colonel Akinteros, and as a result, are an amalgamation of the pro Akinteros and anti-loyalist forces that banded together during the Civil War of 2026. This mod is meant to be the spiritual successor to the new CSAT overhaul by Davik, and that mod absolutely gets my pants tight, so these two together is like porn. All of my AAF boys need to get their hands on this one. At number 6 is Advanced Unit Positioning by Ampersand. Now look, I know what you're saying, god damn, another mod by Ampersand. Look, it's not my fault that he woke up and could have been anything he wanted to, but he decided to be based as fuck. So here we are, and I'm gonna include it in some of my mods. This incredible mod allows you to stick your body out of the windows for the ultimate hey shit ass moment. No longer are you confined to having to maneuver awkwardly to get the drop on forces below you. Now you can stick out of the window and yeet that sweet vengeance upon your enemies. Ampersand has made a super simple minute long video on how to use it on his Steam Workshop page, but you essentially hit C by default to mount your weapon in a window and use the advanced position controls by holding control and scrolling up on your mouse wheel to hop out of the window. There you can use the turret raise and lower keys to adjust. This is pretty rad and will help you get the drop on armor a little better. At number 5, we've got the amazing F-117A Nighthawk by Farm Fox. The player base has been wanting an F-117 for a long, long time, and now, finally, they have it. The mod itself is still a work in progress, but it is beautiful to both look at and fly. True to its design, you won't find this aircraft kitted out with more than a couple JDAMs or laser-guided bombs. This aircraft is meant to penetrate... <laughs> deep into enemy territory and eliminate key military infrastructure to render the enemy's fighting capability useless. The stealth fighter was perfect for knocking out Iraqi communications and headquarters buildings in the opening night of Desert Storm. This is definitely a must-have aircraft for any Arma 3 aviation enthusiast out there. And number 4 is a dynamic kill camera by TTV Dung Salad 69 Holy shit. What a name. Okay, this mod is not super utilitarian, but dude, it's fun. You can get into the add-on options and adjust the chance of the dynamic kill cam spawning. And when it does, it's ridiculous, but amazing. There's not really a whole lot extra to say about this one. It's really something you just kind of have to experience on your own. So go get it and have some fun. And no, it's not practical at all, but it is a lot of fun. At number three, we've got animated grenade throwing by a cucumber and... Zero zero? Eyes? 
dude, I don't know. Finally, a grenade animation that doesn't require Ace. Not that I have anything against Ace, it's amazing, but I don't always have it running. And to be able to not have the extra baggage and still realistically toss grenades is awesome. This one comes with its own arming and action mechanics. By pressing G, you essentially whip out a grenade, and it's not until you actually hit the right mouse button to pull the pin can you release it. Holding shift and scrolling up increases the power of the throw. Simply scrolling up on the mouse wheel with the grenade drawn changes the throw type. Holding the left mouse button starts a swing animation and releasing it will throw the grenade. A pretty awesome little mod that completely changes grenade dynamics and implementation. And number two is Shumava by Breath. Truly one of the more gorgeous European themed terrains to be released in recent years. Shumava is a realistically depicted area between the towns of Shushis and Harastrovice if I even said that remotely close to what it actually is. A southwest border region of the Czech Republic, according to the workshop page description. Ref tried to nail the area as much as possible, citing that only a few areas in this terrain are fictional, and that a vast majority of the map was created as close to the real world geography as possible. The terrain is 151 square kilometers in size, which is about the size of Chernaris. It boasts 37 kilometers of main roads, 185 kilometers of regular roads, and 408 kilometers of dirt roads. It's a lot of fucking roads. This map is absolutely sprawling and will take months to discover and explore. Just getting in a vehicle and roaming around this beautiful terrain makes me feel like I'm back stationed in Europe again. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's also a joy to fly over. It has a pretty badass airbase. So if you want an amazing European style map, grab Shumava. And finally at number one is the incredible Project Rax mod by Wild427, Sekra, and RKSL Rock. This is truly one of the biggest faction mods of the last decade of Arma 3's existence. Prax has been long, long awaited by thousands of players, and on April 1st, 2023, the world was given what they wanted. There are many things still considered work in progress, including new vehicles that the devs want to add over time, but they'll only be added if they fit the lore. The mod itself comes with over 900 new assets, including everything from custom weapons, equipment, uniforms, and of course, tons and tons of new vehicles. The sheer amount of vehicles alone will keep you in the Eden Editor for hours trying all the different variants. I mean, this mod is practically a game in and of itself. Prax is dependent on RHS, so you know you're getting quality assets in game. Both the Royal Army Corps of Sarani and the Sarani Liberation Army have been added, each faction being its own mod to download, so make sure you grab both factions on the workshop. The lore is such that the Royal Army Corps of Sorani was aided by Western allies, and as a result, their vehicles and weapons are primarily assets acquired through foreign military sales like we do for many of our partner nations today. These vehicles receive many Sorani-specific upgrades to keep them on par with or ahead of many near-peer threats, mainly the Sorani Liberation Army, who themselves were bolstered by more Eastern Bloc countries and as such have many more hand-me-down style weapons and equipment from Russia. Their factions are balanced in a way to where the Rax has a dominant air wing, but not as strong of an anti-air defense grid as the SLA. Both factions have many specialized units and sub-factions within them, allowing for more replayability than you'll honestly know what to do with. Prax is a mission maker's wet dream and has had more love and attention poured into it than most people will ever realize. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. We're moving right along into 2023 with more mods hitting the workshop than ever. Even since starting this video, a ton of incredible mods launched that I can't wait to cover. As always, I'd like to thank my beast ass patrons for being the chads they are and for supporting me faithfully all this time. And of course, I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. You literally don't know how much I love engaging with you guys in the comments about our shared love for Arma 3, so drop a comment and let me know how much of a banger this game is. Thank you all, again, 
for watching, and I will see you in the next video.